This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. Welcome to Outdoors on the Farm. There it goes, there it goes! We're headed to Ord, Nebraska to catch up with our friends at Husker Hunts. Stay with us, we've got a great show. We love our land and we treat it right. Work the crops and manage the wildlife. Outdoors on the farm. We do it right, get it done. Use a tractor, use a gun. Outdoors on the farm. Where I was born, I was raised. And I will do whatever it takes. On the farm. Hi everybody, welcome to Outdoors on the Farm. I'm Chip Flory. About 10 years ago, we started this project called Outdoors on the Farm with the idea to tell stories about how farmers are impacting the environment and the habitat of wildlife, how farmers are impacting the animals that use that habitat, and how those animals are impacting farmers as well. The thing that makes Outdoors on the Farm different is that we're telling the success stories about those relationships between farmers and the outdoors. One of those guys, the very first guy that we did with on Outdoors on the Farm was Larry Kelling. We were here several years ago, and Larry, things have changed around here, but not a whole lot. I gotta believe that the answer to this question is gonna be the same as it was back then. What's the most enjoyable thing about running a CSA like this? Chip? Glad you could come back and you are one of the most important things and that is the people. The people that come here are the reason that we have this. Pro Farmer member Larry Kelling, owner of Husker Fields in Ord, Nebraska, invited me and my friend Steve Verda for a day of pheasant and quail hunting on his farm. Guided by Ken Dawson, we set out for a day packed with exciting hunting action. Larry manages the grounds on Husker Fields aggressively to provide the best cover possible for the birds. It's all part of his plans to diversify revenues on his farm. There's about 800 acres on the place, and a lot of it is uh, full stand switchgrass, and we have uh, farm ground that's in between. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look out, you'll see a lot of uh, heavy cover and so we harvested some of it, so we left strips. Okay. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of good hunting out there. Larry's row crop operation does more than support his pheasant and quail hunting business. He's a cattleman that's experimenting with brown bay breeding in his commercial herd. When you look at them, they, they will have the coloration and the resemblance of a brown Swiss, but when you cut them open and they're hanging on right. the rack, they are nothing like a brown Swiss. Right, and that's what it all comes right down to, isn't it? We're talking about improving the, the beef that we put on the table. You're not a cattle producer anymore, you're a beef producer, is what we, it comes down to. We want to produce a product that will sell to the consumer, and uh, that includes cutability and also palatability to the consumer. We, we need something that is going to produce a product that uh, not only fits in the box, right. uh, but also fits on the plate. After lunch in the lodge, Ken, Steve, and I headed to the quail ground at Husker Fields. Zoe came back out, and we had Max, a German shorthair. Hunting behind two great dogs is always a thrill, and it didn't take Max long to find what we were looking for. Remember, this is a working farm as well as a controlled shooting area with an extended hunting season. And when Max found quail feeding on the edge of a switchgrass strip in a cornfield, the action picked up again. What a way to end the day. Thanks to Larry Kelling of Husker Fields in Ord, Nebraska for a fantastic hunt. Coming up, pro staffer Todd Skerritt will take a break from hunting to give us a tip about how to keep our dogs at their best for a long day of hunting. And we'll return to Husker Hunts in Ord, Nebraska for a visit with our old friend Larry Kelling. We'll be right back. Outdoors on the Farm is brought to you by the Ram Truck Brand. A collection of treasures lies between these bumpers. Legendary engines. Industry gold. Awards out the tailpipe. And world-class warranties to back it all up. Sounds like you just hit the jackpot. Ram. 
If it's your kid asking, it's annoying. If it's a billion people across the globe, it's a challenge and responsibility. Farmers feeding the world. It's about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. Please learn more and give generously. Hello folks, this is Mark Gold with Top 3rd Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one-on-one -on -one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top 3rd Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. Mark your calendar. Ag Connect Expo 2011 is coming to Atlanta, Georgia on January 7th through the 10th. Connect with experts. Learn new ideas, new technology. Connect to the future of agriculture, the newest innovations. Connect globally with producers from around the world. This show sets itself apart from the regional shows. Ag Connect Expo 2011, where the world of agriculture comes together. Welcome back to Outdoors on the Farm. Let's take a minute and meet pro staffer Todd Sterrett and get an important tip on how to keep our dogs hunting all day long. Hi, I'm Todd Sterrett with Arrowhead Kennels, Hudson, Iowa. Uh, I've been training retrievers professionally for 12 years, running AKC hunt tests, titling multiple dogs in, in the Master Hunter title, uh, and training your everyday sportsman's gun dogs. I've already been to Nebraska, one hunt with Chip, had a great experience out there. What I'd like to do is share a few tips uh, that I've learned professionally that will transfer uh, success for you and your animal outdoors on the farm. We're talking about hydration from start to finish, weeks before to after the hunt. Why do we do this? The key to have is to have a plan in place weeks prior to your hunt. Uh, along with hydration, you also need to think about nutrition. Uh, nutrition, you need to know your dog. You need to know how much uh, food the dog eats, uh, how much water the dog normally drinks, and you can expect to you know, double, triple that during the hunt. Um, the couple of the key things that you should do during the hunt, uh, add a little bit of water to the dog's food prior to hunting and after hunting. Uh, definitely take water out in the field. Uh, you know, work with that dog so the dog will drink out of a water bottle. Uh, you know, if you need to take a small bowl for your dog, definitely do that. That'll be, that'll be a great thing, you know, to do um, on that front. And also, you know, find little water holes if you need to, cricks to cool the dogs down. Give them 10 minute breaks. You know, don't be afraid to take a break. Uh, you and the dogs both need that, you know, those during the, during the hunt. So, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, these, these tips will help you be uh, successful on your hunt and uh, definitely have more fun on outdoors on the farm. Hey, I chose Husker Hunts for the very first outdoors on the farm because it's a great place to hunt and a great place to spend a day in the field. And that hasn't changed. It's still a great place to hunt. Now let's check back in with Larry and see how things have changed at Husker Hunts since the last time we were there. We are at Husker Hunts Hunting Resort. And that is uh, located at Ord, Nebraska. Rammy, it's March 23rd and we're out here pheasant hunting. How is that possible? Well, what we have is a controlled shooting area here, and uh, we're licensed and registered by the state, and uh, so we're running on the outside of the seasons. This is a hunting resort that we've developed over the last 15 years. Ram. If there isn't one here, right? We sh there we go. Get him. Good Good. Let's go, bud. Here, Rev. Tell me about the ground. Uh, how many acres? Um, what it was before it was a CSA, and there what it is now. Okay. The. Uh, the farm ground actually, uh, we purchased the ground a few years ago. Uh, when we originally started, we rented the ground, and uh, most of it was farm ground. Uh, a lot of this was bid into the CRP program uh, by the former owner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have continued some of those, we've extended some of those. Uh, it is getting more difficult 
to do that because of the rules and regs that uh, the CRP program has on it and what, how they're issuing new contracts, uh, it gets a little more difficult in order to make it economically feasible to retain it in the CRP. The rental rates haven't changed for almost 20 years now. Um, other things they have changed the, the way that we can uh, harvest hay off of it. Yep. And those types of activities uh, are things that uh, add to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And we all know what the costs have done in the last 15 years. Our mm -hmm. taxes have doubled on it. Uh, our, we have increased costs for uh, weed control, uh, things like that. Uh, and, and it just takes more money in order to operate it. So I think there's, there's gonna be a push uh, to a shove in order to get the rental rates to where they need to be, or people are gonna pull it out of CRP and they'll go back to crop ground with it. We'll take a break, then we'll be back with Todd, Steve, and Remy at Husker Hunts as we're chasing those chuckers, and we'll have another chat with owner Larry Kelling. And then Steve will offer a very important tip about how to make sure you've always got a place to hunt outdoors on the farm. Stay right there. Outdoors on the Farm is brought to you by the original Muck Boot Company. Life isn't always comfortable. Your boots should be. Life isn't always taking the easy route. Life isn't always a walk in the park. Life isn't always nine to five. Life isn't always comfortable. Your boots should be. The original Muck Boot Company. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guy permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guy onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guy is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guy protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888 Rust Guy to talk to a rust expert or go to rustguy.com. America needs to know that something still works in this country. One of those things that is working well is agriculture. And at U.S. Farm Report, what's crucial to me is to make sure we convey the confident, competent voice that I hear from America's farmers and rural residents, that they can count on us. Rural America works. Agriculture works. Watch U.S. Farm Report Saturday morning and Sunday afternoons on RFD-TV. U.S. Farm Report, the spirit of the countryside. Confusion, doubt, fear, forces that drive the markets in unpredictable ways. It would be nice to find a voice you trust, a broker with an impeccable compliance record, someone with global contacts and expertise, a sought after speaker who simply tells it like it is. All that with 30 years of experience navigating these markets. Someone like that would be quite a find. Bauer Trading, experience at work for you. Join me and country music star Justin Moore on a hunt. One lucky viewer will join me, Justin, and the pro staff team for a turkey hunt that will be featured on the show. Go to OutdoorsOnTheFarm.com and learn how to enter. Deadline is January 31st, but don't wait. Sign up now. This is my second trip here. We were here, I don't remember, eight or nine years ago, something like that. And you've added some crop ground and some, some ground that you can run the cattle on and, and so on. Um, that wasn't here. Uh, that ground's come out of the CRP since then. We've had some of the ground come out of the CRP, uh, some of our pasture ground that was uh, flat enough and good enough quality. Uh, we've developed that into uh, farm ground. We did put a pivot on the place. Yep. On this area here, we have 800 acres. Uh, on the total farm, there's 4,000 acres. Okay. And so this is just a portion of the business that we have. Uh, mm -hmm. The livestock business is, is quite a bit of it, and then also the farming business. But the farming business is starting to, to take more of the resources. Like I said, we were here 
eight or nine years ago, and we talked a little bit about how the ground has changed. How has the business of the side of, of Husker hunts changed? Any new players in the business? You know, when when you were here last, we were Husker Fields. Right. And we right. have, um, uh, my son and daughter-in-law have come into the business uh, about four years ago, and that has been a real joy because now it is truly a family business. Yep. And that has probably been the biggest change that we've made in the business. And it's been a definite help in the business as far as the workload and the ability. He is living on the premise now. Yep. And that, re that helps out a lot. That really helps out. Rooster! Nice! Took two, but that's all right. <laughs> Finally cleared for me, but yep. we were still over yep. the dog. Here! Remington, Remington, Rem, come here, come here, come here. Get over here. Come on. Hey, come here. Rem, good boy. Number one, Tucker. We're on the board. We're on the board, baby. Now let's just get into a mess of them down in here. So Larry, we're out here shooting chucker. What exactly are these chuckers? Chuckers are actually a, a Eurasian bird originally from uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan and that area. And uh, people brought them over here and they adapted pretty well in rocky uh, country. So a uh, place like Montana, places like that, that uh, rocky open country. Yep. That doesn't have a lot of cover. They yep. they thrive very well in that type of country. Uh, they're not native to uh, this area at all, and they don't uh, they don't survive extremely well in our areas. Yep. Because of the just because of the habitat. Right. Isn't right. Uh, conducive to their lifestyle. And uh, what uh, what they do here though is in the spring they're about the size of a of a hen pheasant and they yeah. fly about like a quail and they're yeah. they're a coving they're not a individual bird yeah. they're more of a coving bird uh, they work well here because a lot of times in uh, uh, the pheasants the roosters want to run in the yeah. spring because they're rounding up their they're rounding up the hens ready for the breeding season right and uh, so they don't they want to run instead of fly and the chucker are a lot more apt to fly so they're a great hunting bird for this area well I like quail you love them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go get another one, man. Outdoors on the Farm Pro staffer Steve Berta is my oldest hunting partner and an all-around great guy. He's got years of experience in the field, and it seems like every time we're out there together, I pick up a tip or two. And I think now is the time for Steve to bring some of his knowledge to you, too. So, Steve, take us outdoors on the farm. Hi, I'm Steve Berta, Oxford Junction, Iowa. Lived in the area all my life enjoy the outdoors as much or more than any other person. I grew up hunting and fishing with Chip since an early, early age. We both are passionate about the outdoors. One thing I do excel at though, is either sitting in that tree stand or on that river bank, soaking it all in. Roaster! It isn't about taking that animal, it's about being outdoors on the farm. I'm out here in the timber doing what I enjoy. Spending time in the outdoors is great, but the problem is I don't own my own ground. So that means I have to gain permission and hold permission from a landowner or a friend. So a few tips to maybe help hold that once you do gain permission or you don't, you're not able to go back out there again. Simple things, closing a gate behind you crossing a fence properly. Guarantee a farmer sees you jump off the top wire, he's not gonna appreciate it. Stay off that alfalfa field in the winter when it's snow cover. Packs the snow down, kills the alfalfa. Offer to help when you can help. Get out there, maybe do chores for him when he has to go somewhere. Or just plain watch the place, go out and check it for him, make sure the livestock's watered. All of that will go a long ways to help hold your position on his ground so you can go out and enjoy outdoors on the farm. After a quick break, we'll head back to Ord, Nebraska as Steve, Todd, and I wrap up our day at Husker Hunts. 
the dogs were excited. There were plenty of birds and it was a great day with some good friends. I think you'll see why this is one of my favorite places to hunt and to have fun outdoors on the farm. A collection of treasures lies between these bumpers. Legendary engines. Industry gold. Awards out the tailpipe. And world-class warranties to back it all up. Sounds like you just hit the jackpot. Ram. Are you looking to increase the yields of your corn crop? Come get an education. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Join me for Corn College TV. Two of the best agronomists in the business will walk you step by step through the growing season. From in-field diagnostics to finding the right equipment for the job, Corn College TV is your weekly tutorial for getting the most out of your fields. Technology is moving fast. Don't get left behind. Join us for Corn College TV. I'm Greg Hunt. I believe diversification, transparency, and liquidity are the important factors in today's investment arena. Let Greg show you how professionally directed managed futures programs can work for you. Learn how commodity trading advisors provide access to global coverage in hard assets, financials, and many other commodities, seeking returns regardless of market direction. Call today to see how you can work with some of the world's top regulated commodity trading advisors. Now let's go back to Ord, Nebraska as we wrap up a day of hunting at Husker Hunts with Steve and Todd and we give a big thank you to owner Larry Kelling for all of his hospitality. We ain't seen one damn bear yet. <laughs> it's going to be a long afternoon if we don't find a bear, you know, because once you find a bear, then the work starts. Yeah. When we started ours, we really didn't do a lot of investigating into uh, other controlled shooting areas. And what we have done, uh, we wanted to kind of make the area uh, so when people would come in, it would be like kind of going to Grandpa's place. You know, what they remembered as a kid when they'd go out to Grandpa's and go hunting. Uh, and so that's the way we developed it. And it was, you know, everything from the screen door to the old yard light. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, you're not going to find uh, any satellite TVs or anything like that out here because uh, we don't offer that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it's roosters only on this place. That's right. We, we never did start shooting hens, and that was one of the things. So it's, it is roosters only. Yeah. yeah, just like it was on ground. Just like it was then. They busted some quail out of there. One other thing that has changed since the last time that we were out here. Yeah. Are the prices that you're charging. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it goes back to that bottom line, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's one of those things probably where uh, we probably don't charge quite enough because I think there are still individuals that look at what a person is charging and they're thinking, uh, wait a minute, now I'll go to a Knicks game and I'll drop 400 bucks with a family going to a Knicks game, right? And how on earth are you ever going to deliver me? A hunt with lodging, meals, guides, food, bird processing, and everything else that goes along with that uh, for just a little more than that. Yep. And uh, so the the rates that we charge have gone up a little bit. Yep. yep. They definitely but have. It's still a heck of a good entertainment value and a heck of a good way to go out and have more fun outdoors on the farm. By golly, it kind of turned into a windy. Uh Nebraska Day, didn't it? We've learned about how things have changed at Husker Hunts in the last eight or nine years, but the most important thing that we've done, we had fun outdoors on the farm, didn't we? Yeah, All right. Yes, sir. Great day, guys. Great day. 
great day. Next time on Outdoors on the Farm, we'll travel to Mississippi to see how catfish farming has changed the environment and we'll bring you a great story about how farmers are working together to bring back a lost lake. Join me and country music star Justin Moore on a hunt. One lucky viewer will join me, Justin, and the pro staff team for a turkey hunt that will be featured on the show. Go to OutdoorsOnTheFarm.com and learn how to enter. Deadline is January 31st, but don't wait. Sign up now. Outdoors on the farm. We'll do it right, get it done. Use a tractor, use a gun.